As uprooted Palestinians squeezed into Rafah spent another day dreading a possible Israeli invasion. Protesters gathered outside a meeting of world leaders in Munich, reiterated appeals to Israel to show restraint. Inside, Egypt's foreign minister reaffirmed Israel's plan to send ground forces into Rafah and the possibility of spillover would cross a red line. The issue of, uh, uh, of displacement, uh, which is a violation of international humanitarian law, whether it's internal or external, uh, cannot be tolerated. Israel's planned advance into the final stretch of Gaza, where more than a million people are living in makeshift tent cities, has been nearly universally criticized. Egypt is reinforcing its border, fearing an influx of new arrivals would pose a security risk. Alarmed at the humanitarian toll that could arise, South Africa has asked the UN's top court for urgent measures to safeguard Rafah. But the court has declined to intervene, writing this perilous situation demands immediate and effective implementation of its ruling last month, ordering Israel to prevent acts of genocide. Despite the international warnings, Israel's president speaking in Munich signaled the country's intentions for a ground assault. If you want to uproot the terror infrastructure in order to enable a better future for the Palestinians and Israelis, you have to go in physically. Truce talks involving the U.S., Egypt, Israel and Qatar have yet to produce a breakthrough. We still uh, see some difficulties on, on uh, the humanitarian part of, of uh, these negotiations. Now, if talks on the humanitarian element of any deal progress, he adds the obstacle over the numbers of Palestinians who would be released in exchange for hostages held by Hamas could be tackled. But Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said Saturday there was no point in further negotiations until Hamas makes changes to its demands. For City News, I'm Karen Seolin.